Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning.
but you were good, and you see, it just takes a team. <laughs> Thank you, Laura. <laughs> you may be seated. Our opening prayer this morning is a responsive prayer. It's printed in your bulletin. I'll be reading the light print, and then we'll read the bold together. God of wind, word, and fire, lead us out of Babel, where we claim our own languages and cast out others, create borders we call protection, and care for our own while making war with outsiders. Lead us out of Babel, where we earn all we can, spend all we can, and look confused when asked to give all we can. Lead us out of Babel, where we choose people and places that match us, churches that match our opinions, and sit high in our certainty, afraid to be challenged by other ideas. Lead us out of Babel, where we fear difference, fear change, and speak a language of us, ours, and mine. Lead us to a spiritual place where we embrace the diversity of your creation and hold fast the promises you made that we were all adopted into your glory when Christ defeated the grave. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all flesh, Lord, and make your children wholly thine. In unison, now let us confess our sins before the Lord. God of majesty and power, we tremble when we become aware of who you are. Who are we that you should visit us or expect something from us? We confess our preference for the predictable. We admit our resistance to your spirit. We acknowledge our misuse of your gifts to us. We regret referring our divisions to your unity. Forgive us, O oh God of power and might, that we might learn to forgive. Draw us back into a right relationship with you and with one another. Amen. God has reached out to us once again offering salvation, making us whole, drawing us into community where life is integrated and filled with meaning. The Spirit comes to us, making holy the commonplace. We are forgiven. Glory be to God. Please stand and sing together in the glory of number 70. this morning. 
from Genesis verses chapter 9, verse 1, and chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Bless God blessed Noah and his sons, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Then in chapter 11, the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the whole face of the earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. And the Lord said, if as one people speaking one language, they've begun to do this, nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come. Let us go down and confuse their languages so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is Psalm 104, verses 24 to 35 only. So we won't do the first part. In your hymnal on page 826. Verse 24 begins on page 827. Verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind 
came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd became together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pam Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judeans, Judaism, Christians and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. So this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for all God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And well done. <laughs> <laughs> My sermon this morning is very short to leave time for Bob to report on the annual conference. So, we have two texts to consider, both about languages, hearing, and understanding. Their message is that God doesn't want us to isolate ourselves from people who are different from us. God loves variety. Just look at creation. The story of Babel in Genesis chapter 11 follows the story of Noah and the flood in chapter 9, where God tells Noah's sons to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Then, chapter 10 describes the different nations that formed, each with their own language. Yet in Babel, which refers to Babylon, we hear that people all spoke the same language and decided to build a tower with its top in heaven to make a name for themselves. Otherwise, they would be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. That's what God told them to do, to scatter over the whole earth. They resisted God's plan. Babylonians were technologically advanced and arrogant. They isolated themselves from other nations and from God. You notice they didn't pray. They weren't building this tower to honor God. They were doing it for them, on their own. They isolated themselves from other nations they isolated themselves from God. They were trying to reach heaven on their own power and thought they were doing something amazing, yet God had to go way down to the earth just to see their tower. In God terms, it wasn't so amazing. They had lost touch with God, so God set them on a better path. 
confusing their languages and scattering them, which is what he told them to do in the first place. Now, the second reading is at the beginning of the book of Acts. We've been moving through Acts, and if I remember right, we were up to chapter 16, but now we're going back to chapter 2. The Holy Spirit descended on the Jewish followers of Christ who had gathered in Jerusalem for the Jewish festival of Shavuot. In Hebrew, it's Shavuot. Pentecost in Greek. And suddenly, as Donna read for us, they could all speak and understand different languages. This is very different from Babel, right? In Babel, they could understand each other because they were the same. They all spoke the same language. At Pentecost, they understood each other, not because they were all the same, but because the Holy Spirit gave them the gift of understanding, the gift of languages and discernment. The power to understand came from God. What does this mean for us? People often deceive themselves into thinking that the way to a simple, peaceful life, the way to pros prosper, is to build up a wall to protect themselves. They wall off all the people who are different. They think if I only talk to people who are like me, my life will be good. But people are imperfect. You may have noticed that. So if everybody that I associate thinks like me, and I'm imperfect, and I make a mistake, everybody makes the same mistake. There's nobody there to say, uh, Pastor Kathy, we need to have a talk. We think you are way off base. <laughs> And so off we all go on our merry way, doing the wrong thing. Very proud of ourselves, thinking, well, everyone agrees with me, so we must be right. This is why opposites attract, right? I am creative, messy, sloppy, big ideas, very little attention to detail. <laughs> My husband is organized, forward thinking, extreme attention to detail. So he's the one that says, that's a really great idea. So how are you going to do this and this and this and this? And I go, oh, yeah, I, I didn't think about any of that. So you see, God loves diversity. We need diversity. I am incomplete. You are each incomplete. But together, as a whole body, the body of Christ, we are complete with the Holy Spirit to guide us. And that's it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Our hymn of response is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness.
from Lemon for your purple bag. <laughs> kept me warm during the week. <laughs> Gave me an opportunity to collect a lot of items to share with both churches. Yesterday morning I had a neighbor in the pew sitting in front of me, or in the chair sitting in front of me, to <laughs> take a picture of the pastor and myself. You see, the night before, Pastor Kathy left me at the altar. <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> she was processing uh, in the ordination service, and I wanted to get a picture of her where the other ministers gathered there. And so I texted her about an hour beforehand. I said, which entrance are you coming in? I thought they were all coming in the same entrance. Um, she didn't open her email or her cell phone and um, didn't get the message. So I waited and I waited in the lobby <laughs> just in case I would catch her before she went in. And who comes in but Pastor Margie McCarty? Hey, Bob, how are you? She made me go. I said, Well, where's Pastor Kathy? Well, I think she's back from where everybody else is getting ready. And so I, uh, I asked uh, Jean Blackie, who's the minister of our factory, but I'm Bob Fillmore, who's at Lake Lamont. And she said, Well, I don't think she's with our group. So I thought she was going to be singing with the choir, so maybe she was with another group. So I'm going to sit down in front of the fish. Anyway, I missed her completely because she came in a different end. <laughs> I'm here for you. Sorry. I'll try not to do it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this may go a little longer than the 20 minutes I've been allowed, so please forgive me. But I think some things happen that you might be interested in. My first act of God uh, heading toward an annual conference happened about 9.09 on Wednesday morning. I was tooling down I-81, and right in front of me, thank God my brakes worked, I was a bear. Wow. <laughs> and so uh, it ambled across, and I just prayed to God that he uh, would make it across the other lanes of traffic, because it, you don't want to be out there with the hundreds of vehicles shooting by you. I arrived on a uh, Wednesday morning, a little after 10 o'clock when the services started. I had remembered an annual conference starting with a lady session. I thought, oh, no big deal, I'll just you know, miss that. And unfortunately, I took the first exit into Hershey, which gave me a nice view of everything around Hershey, but didn't give me to the launch. <laughs> so 20 minutes later, I got there, and it was a lengthy um, opening worship service by Bishop Sanders signing her ball. She said that we're on the brink of revival, and the, the theme of the annual conference was to um, address it being, I am doing a new thing. And that she was um, imploring us not to be what we've done in the past, but what we could be, and to, to look to the things that emphatically love our neighbor beyond ourselves. One of the exciting parts of the morning worship was that they recognized all of the retirees across the conference, including um, Fred Snyder, who was over at Mopany, um, and, uh, what's the name in here, sorry. up in Springdale and Denmark. And they just were acknowledged for their many years of service for the conference. There were about 30 persons that were acknowledged. Pastor Steiner Ball um, preached about new beginnings, about how we start to 
re-energize ourselves following the pandemic and gave us elements to carry with us through the journey. Uh, the worship had a communion service with about a thousand people there. You can imagine how that would have unfolded. Um, we were reminded that we probably should have masks because not everybody was um, comfortable with people not wearing masks. And so during the week, uh, during that particular service, we were given communion with the, picking up a little thimble and a cracker and, and the hooking and then sharing communion together in our separate seats. The opening session of Congress was kind of striking. The bishop saying, blessed be the tide and binds. On her own, solo. And this was her way of kind of quieting our spirit and bringing us into con conduct of ecclesiastical business of the church. And it, frankly, it was refreshing. It, um, it served its purpose. She asked her how many people were there for the first time and would you please stand? And of course she stood, because this was her first time at an at a, um, uh, in-person meeting of the conference. Uh, Bishop uh, Cynthia Coy, Moore Coy Coy was not there. She was simultaneously holding an annual conference in Western Pennsylvania, and they were meeting in Erie. And so we would occasionally during conference see her on teleprompter. Um, but um, and she, on Friday morning, she engaged us in a Bible study, uh, you know, first two books of uh, Hebrews. Um, she introduced the conference secretary and how business would be conducted through the way, and if resolutions were being made, there, had, there could be no more than three um, motions of support or three motions against. That went pretty well. Then we had a, um, that went pretty well for the instruction. <laughs> um, later, uh, right afternoon, Joyce Davis, who is our conference lay leader, um, spoke about our role as laity and implored us to take a vital role because that was what she had been addressed and what our, the, were taught in the New Testament of the role that public at large has in uh, being a part of the spirit of the living God. We broke for lunch at 12.30 and then we came back, there was a little skip provided by two of the younger pastors in our conference, uh, one who was in a canoe and she couldn't get out of her canoe, she kept one foot in the canoe and one foot in the water and she was unsure of herself and then there was another one that came in with an interview and she was just vibrant and moving and telling her, how are you going to reach out to the world if you stay stuck in your canoe? And so we learned, you know, as Jesus did in his parables, about not being afraid to move and to get off their comfort zones. Then we were introduced to our the youth members of across the conference, um, and we had a stand-up comic in the group. She was probably 13 or 14. And the first thing she said to us was, how does Moses make coffee? He brews it. <laughs> but she went on for four or five cracks, and uh, we, we actually really enjoyed it. Um, we went through a number of uh, votes on resolutions. A few of them I'll, I'll bring you some items about. Um, we passed five resolutions which were not super contentious. Um, one was on uh, recognition of Mental Health Awareness Month and Mental Illness, that's in May, and Mental Illness Awareness Week in October. They affirmed the uh, Disability Awareness Sunday in October, and there was a resolution on graceful departures um, following the discipline. This, of course, came out of the General Conference of 2019, and um, the resolution was attempting to give our body a sense of how do we gracefully acknowledge congregations that have decided they want to leave. And I'll get into a little bit more of that in just a minute, but that resolution itself passed. There was 
the bylaw change for trustees regarding term and tenure. And there was a wind-up termination of, seedling, of a seedling financial ministry that began in 1919. And it actually became a crying gag because people who had benefited from this um, seedling ministry had provided loans for up to $10,000 to churches, probably every church in the, in the predecessor conference that had benefited from it at some point in their careers, helping to replace a roof or a leaking toilet or whatever. Um, it, it, a path to end that program was voted up, and, and it, it will um, pass by a show of hands. Um, the, the issue of, is because they were going, during COVID, surprisingly, they were giving out so few loans that the state banking commission was looking into you know, investigating why that was and how much money they were carrying forward. So that itself was um, was addressed, and fortunately for those of the people who served on the commission that came up with that resolution, they were fearful that, that um, something else could happen. In resolution four, there was a statement that recognized the unity in our diversity and the gift of differences. It was a beautiful statement. I can hardly imagine that anybody would be opposed to it. But when the floor was open, it was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and so there were a lot of contentious elements, amendments made. Um, and the bottom line was that the resolution was defeated. So the resolution itself was to try to affirm um, a, a process that would lead to disaffiliation of churches that were fearful about the future of the church, the denomination. And that, that particular measure was, um, was defeated by a standing vote. So what a standing vote means is that if there's not an overwhelming measure supporting the document, that people had to stand and the tellers would come through and they count the people uh, on both sides. And then the second one that really surprised me was a resolution calling for the rights of Palestinian children for an end to aid um, to the United States, which was actually validating through its expenditures um, that children be incarcerated or have other um, unspoken things done. And there was a considerable debate in the floor because a lot of people uh, expressed that they did not want to do anything that essentially took a stand over Israel. And it lost by seven votes, 353 to 346. So the resolution makers are gonna to need to go back and clean up some of the language. During um, conference, the, uh, the body did a number of things. Set a budget for 2022-23. And approved it. Approved an extensive list of persons nominated to care for the conference boards and agencies. On um, Wednesday night, it held a memorial service um, to honor pastors and spouses who died in the past year. Uh, Alta May Hester, who was the wife of Paul Hester, and uh, served at East London Church. I'm not sure if she served, or he served alone. Her husband served women, but she was among those recognized. There was an ordination commissioning service Thursday night, which I could really refer to as being left at the altar. I was just up there taking pictures. So I had to get out of the way because our former district superintendent, who I swear was trained as a drill sergeant, <laughs> she did not like me taking pictures while you know, people were filling the chairs. So. I quickly removed myself and I could not find Pastor Kathy. <laughs> During that service, Bishop Sangerwell celebrated bridge building for the future by the laying on of hands of pastors Elizabeth Jackson, Christopher Weems, and Adam Miller for commissioning. And there were also five persons who were ordained as elders in the church, which is a positive step for our conference. I want to share with you some of the things that I brought back. So 
Pastor Kathy and I could have a brew at the conference, they gave out these little <laughs> <laughs> coolies. Actually, the um, they also work for soda. Okay. So, yeah, we were using it for soda and water. Um, but the, these were brought out by the Philadelphia insurance companies who insure both of our churches. And they had announced during the conference session that they had sensors that you could place in your church and they would detect if there was an area where water might be that you needed to pay attention to. Well, there was just a run on them that they didn't have anymore. Oh. <laughs> so they gave us these, or we could take a pen. And then you could write us about how to get it. Well, I, I did go back uh, during break and um, sign both of those up to get the sensors. Oh, wonderful. Great. <laughs> The issue of racism was addressed during the several sessions, but we didn't spend a whole lot of time dwelling on it. There was more prayer um, about you know, gun violence and, and dealing with that issue, but there is a, a DVD and a, a workbook on how we might address the matter of addressing racism in our congregations. A flyer from Mission Central. Um, there were a couple of flyers, one on, I think you got this, Kathy, about uh, lay servant ministries, and a, a separate sheet that deals with where they stand in the Susquehanna Conference. <clears throat> Upper Room was there. Um, there were volunteers and mission that were there. Um, the Board of Global Ministries provided a handy mission map of all places around the world where our connectional church has missions. And so if you ever have any questions about do we have people in that country, this provides the answer. There were more than ample discussions about um, leadership ministries and how we connect the people that we serve with what's available to them. A discussion about um, camps and retreats. Child advocacy was a major issue um, that was, um, seemed to be pretty well frequented at the table service. The issue of disability ministries. When we voted on the resolution for disability uh, ministries, um, one of the preachers from Altoona District got up and said, you know, if you really take disability seriously, you would have closed captioned information on your big screen TV. You would also have somebody that would be addressing people in sign language. You know, and so um, it kind of got a, the conference, you know, was reminded that not everybody received information the same way. And it was a gentle reminder. Um, and I applaud our bishop for making a serious point, when we, especially when we dealt with the third resolution, um, there was a, quite a bit of cheering in the audience for um, the fact that that resolution had passed. And somebody in the microphone three had come forward and said, uh, can we not have tainted holy conversation? And so the bishop gave us a lecture on the importance of diversity in our conference and letting people speak without passing judgment in loud ways that serve no purpose to improve the conversation. And that was very helpful. Um, this is not quite as good as Father Mike uh, with the Catholic Church. But it is a 40-day plan on how to listen to the New Testament. And there is a, a, a DVD that's available to you. There are many a programs throughout the larger denomination that address uh, missions and fellowship. One program is available to people in 20 and 30 years old. And I, we had a tabletop exercise on Thursday afternoon in which we were all, uh, I, uh, advised to speak to one another about things that were working well in our churches and um, 
share some really good ideas. And the the super the bishop said, you know, we do not need to be talking about the controversial resolutions. You know, this is about thinking positively toward the future. And I was so headstrong about, wow, we got we just got six new members in our church. Well, I never, I barely got a bit, an opportunity to discuss that. And um, there are people that did not pay attention to the bishop, and they just, eh. so, really? yeah, in our group. And so I was really disappointed that there was not better leadership at our table. Maybe I should have taken it. But um, really it bummed me out because I wanted to, you know, to say about how important it is to have come in discipleship groups and smaller group sessions that get you closer to your responsibilities. And um, so I'm, I'm, that's a, it was a failing of me not to speak up more. Um, I also, in my moment of pride, um, was put down a pedestal. <laughs> uh, when the Board of Discipleship uh, representative from New Jersey was present and they had given out an award for the, the congregation, or the, I guess to the minister, um, who had brought in the most people during the course of, since the last annual conference. And there was a woman there, I think first name was Margaret. Anyway, she had three congregations in Fulton County, which is a little bit, a little bit southwest of um, Gettysburg. And she brought in more than 15 members, more than five members per congregation. New Christians. Yeah, new Christians. Baptized. Wow. New Christians. It's amazing. I looked around for Kathy and said, you got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday morning, everybody there was, I hope it still works, because I had this on all day yesterday, honoring Pastor Kathy and her father. But these were given out at annual conferences, and we closed with this little light of mine. But before we closed with that, there was a, a preacher from the State College District who expressed that he was blessed by the grace of God in 1991 when he brought him into the world. And he was from Altoona. And he spoke about the fact that Altoona's history includes from 1948 when Billy Graham gave one of his first crusades in North America. He said the pastors of that community which were supposed to blanket the entire community, were at odds amongst themselves, not exactly sure how to do it. They shut the crusade down two or three weeks into a, a program that was supposed to last six. And according to Billy Graham's biography, it was supposed to have, quite, he entered into a period of great concern for whether he should even be doing this. And then six weeks later, he went out to Los Angeles. And after six weeks of um, unbelievable crusade, he was adorned in the name of America's preacher. Thank God he never left um, during his lifetime because he made a wonderful gift. And it was an expression of how much one person can do, you know, as long as you give the glory to the right sources. And I. Um, Appreciate the fact that our conference gave us these to remind, and then, you know, in a very simple way, we sang together this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, and I, uh, I applaud the people who are organizing the conference for for reminding us that uh, it's not super major, but it is major. It gives us a sense of um, awareness of. One person can really make a difference. Two, two other things that happened in the uh, conference at the end was the announcement of um, new appointments on July 1. And I'm grateful that Pastor Kathy wasn't among them. <laughs> <laughs> I was so grateful that myself and she and her 
first cousin who sat with us Friday. We joined Arm and Arm El um, making our Wesley covenant with the church, and um, we were all in the spirit of one in that one. Um, we do have some new appointments in Wyoming County. Uh, Fred Siders left um, Mahogany Forks in Jenningsville and will be replaced by George Price. And um, down in Knox and um, Nathan Weaver is going to become involved in the charge with Kunkel. The former Knox and pre um, preacher had been with um, Harvey Lake, Carl Alderson, and um, Kunkel. So this is a little bit of change there. Um, Pastor John Schaefer, who was with us uh, last week, um, he's going to Springville and Dimmick. Terry Hughes has retired, and um, Doug Sivers, uh, who was a former assistant to the district superintendent when um, Marion Hartman was at, um, he is going to be taking over the East Rush and Fairdale churches, uh, two small churches like ours, uh, in Susquehanna County. That pretty much concludes my report. Any questions about what's going on? I do have some things to give to the East Lone or the Lone Church, and I'm going to try to bring them down here in just a second. It was a great time, and I appreciate the opportunity to be with probably a thousand. This was the first uh, annual conference I've been to where they didn't acknowledge the, you know, what was the peak attendance of the group, so we had a real sense of it. The vote that was taken on Resolution 4 suggested about 840 people were there, representing our 850 churches. So, um, but that uh, did not include all of the visitors there. The visitor section was pretty well attended itself. Thanks again for sending me, and I would encourage anybody um, that's much younger than myself to attend because you will definitely be changed by what you learn. Thank you very much. And next year we will be in Williamsport, May 18th through the 20th. At this time, I invite you to share the peace with each other. Peace be with you. time when we share our prayer concerns and celebrations. Is there anybody you would like to lift up this morning? Uh, Naomi. Uh, for the family of Dick Reese who passed away last Thursday, he was our best man when we got married. Uh, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, my good buddy Paul Gear. Um, Paul Gear? Yeah, pastor up at, a, um, at the South Montrose or the Hutton and the Antique Shop. Um, there. Um, he was for 50 years as a United Methodist uh, chaplain at the Lackawanna County Jail. Mm -hmm. He died on May 23rd, and I, I didn't learn about it the day after the mm -hmm. conference had started. So he wasn't recognized. I'm sure it will be next year. At his funeral will be sometime next month. Okay. I'm sorry for your loss. He taught me about social justice just by his life. That's how a lot of us learn about social justice. See, when he was part of the freedom marches down in the south. Wow. <laughs> Very committed.
practitioner spoke to my mother and sister who were at the hospital. And when they explained that he was not going to ever be coming home, that his heart and lungs were very weak, he was 87 years old, they decided to uh, extubate him to see if he could breathe on his own. It was a blessing. He had been getting much sicker and much sicker. So. The funeral is Wednesday at 11, which is why I won't be here for the 10 o'clock meeting. But I emailed you, Kathy, that um, Pastor Tanya can be here. If you can just open up the church and take notes. <laughs> <laughs> we will be celebrating in Hortonville, New York. <laughs> There'll be a service at the Presbyterian Church, and I'll participate a tiny little bit. Mostly I'll be crying. And, um, <laughs> and then there's a party at the fire department. <laughs> so, um, he was a good guy. Others? Michelle? I have Joy. My um, niece had two graduations last Thursday night and Friday night. One's from the um, Susquehanna County Career Technical Center. She graduated for their um, CNA program. And then she graduated, then all the graduates on Friday night from Tunkhannock High School. Oh, great. It's kind of a little weird not to see Bob down there running around with his camera, I have to say. I missed him. I did have two photographers there. Yeah, I see them down there. I'm like, where's Bob? I'm like, oh, yeah, he's at home. And then we have another huge joy. It's Pastor, 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 Pastor Kathy's birthday today. It's my so birthday. We should be a sing to her. <laughs> you want to sing to me? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, you know, the service is going to go to noon probably. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the celebration will continue right after because there is all kinds of cake and stuff downstairs and gifts and so everybody oh, please stick so, around for a minute or two. I don't know if you realize but this People often call this the birthday of the church as well because it's Pentecost. So I am quite honored to share my birthday <laughs> with the entire Church of God. <laughs> so I think we should sing happy birthday to Pastor Kathy and the church. Right? You don't have anywhere to go, right? Stick around until like noon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about that? We'll give you a ride home. Thanks. Hit it. <laughs> ever-living and ever-loving God, we praise you for your loving presence with us. Come, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit, transform our societies that broken people find healing, that lonely people 
find love, that bitter people find peace, that fearful people find hope. Come, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit, touch the world's leaders and governments and bring renewal, that communication can be open, that hostile relationships between people and nations evaporate, that a hunger for justice addresses the hunger for food felt by so many. Come, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit, fill your church that our worship will be ever more pleasing to you, that our prayers change our minds instead of trying to change yours, that our lives make a real difference to real people in the real world. Come. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our lives with your presence so that more and more every day, all that we do and say and hope will be an act of worship to you and an expression of love to others. To the glory of your name, amen. 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 Our offering this morning includes the offering of bread and juice on the table. Would someone please bring the offering forward? I have the communion liturgy on my phone, and I think Bob grabbed it. Yeah, is it in your pocket? No. I saw you pick it up, and I was like, it's black. There it is. <laughs> No problem. The beauty of technology, we hope that this will work. I should have gotten something out of it and left at the altar. <laughs> I have never left anyone except you at the altar. You should feel very special. <laughs> to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the face of the waters. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. Your spirit came upon prophets and teachers, anointing them to speak your word. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. At his baptism in the Jordan, your spirit descended upon him and declared him your beloved son. With your spirit upon him, he turned away the temptation of sin. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, baptizing us with the Holy Spirit and with fire as on the day of Pentecost. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. again. <clears throat> Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood and empowered by the gifts of the Spirit. By your spirit, Lord, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, showing forth the fruit of the spirit until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, mighty God, now and forever.
body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. The table is ready, and this is an open table. All who believe in Christ as their Savior may participate. We will be receiving by intention. I will hand you the bread, the body, and you may dip it in the cup. Try not to dip your finger. Come. <laughs> the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken. of Christ broken for you. We have planted trees in the past, and we have given wind chimes in the past. So there's some wind chimes. stand at my grave and weep. Do not stand at my grave and weep. I am not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circled flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I did not die. Thank you. And remember.
remember this goes for everyone that you love who has passed and will someday be true. Let's pray. Lord, we give you thanks for this wonderful meal that you have provided for us. This meal that reminds us of your great sacrifice. That because of you, because you were obedient to the very end, that you gave your life for all of us. We now can be confident <coughs> that we are loved and that one day we too will be with you, one body, with Christ, with God, in spirit. Our hymn of response is All Who Hunger, number 2126. to love in the name